Conscious capitalism is a new way of thinking about business uh, that goes considerably beyond the traditional approach that uh, most uh, executives and uh, business teachers uh, take in thinking about business. Uh, it basically has three elements. And the first element is that business operates with a higher purpose that goes beyond profit maximization. So the reason a company exists is not simply to make money or to maximize returns, but actually has a broader goal that it's trying to achieve in the world. So for example, Southwest Airlines, uh, when it first got established in the early 1970s, their purpose really was to democratize flying. They wanted to make flying accessible to the ordinary American. At the time that they started, only 15% of Americans had ever flown in an airplane. Today that number is about 85%. And a big part of the change can really be attributed to the approach that Southwest used and that others subsequently uh, emulated. So the idea again of having a higher purpose that resonates with all different stakeholders is very important. The second component of uh, being a conscious business is to uh, operate with a stakeholder orientation uh, that looks at, and, and the way that we describe stakeholders in our framework is uh, using the acronym SPICE, which stands for society, partners, investors, customers, and employees. And society being mentioned first for a very important reason that businesses have to be on the right side of society. They have to have a net positive impact on the world, and which is where that higher purpose also, also fits in. But these stakeholders have to be looked at not only in terms of balancing the emphasis that the company places on them, but also in terms of joining and aligning their interests. So it's not just about, it's not actually at all about trade-offs. It's not, it's not saying that you know, we may have overemphasized our investors and our customers in the past, and we need to actually look after our employees better, so we need to take some resources from here and deploy them here. Uh, the, the real magic of this is to figure out how to actually create synergy, so that what is good for employees is also good for customers, is also good for investors, partners, uh, communities, the environment, society, etc. So a stakeholder orientation is, is also central to this, in fact, at the heart of it. And the third element has to do with leadership. Uh, we're finding that the days of the traditional imperial command and control uh, CEO are really numbered. We don't find that many examples today of uh, com companies that are uh, practicing this way of doing business that are actually led by those kinds of individuals. So what we, uh, what we see instead are leaders that you might describe as servant leaders or as conscious leaders who exist in service of that higher purpose and also, in a sense, service to the corporation and the employees and the stakeholders. So their func they view their function really as developing the potential of other people within the company and ultimately aligning everything that the company does around the achievement of that higher purpose. They tend to be uh, much um, more modestly paid compared to CEOs of, uh, uh, you know, under the old model. Uh, they tend to have much deeper passion and commitment for the basic uh, purpose that that business exists for. So those are the three elements, a higher purpose, a stakeholder orientation that focuses on joining and aligning and looking for synergies rather than trade-offs across stakeholders, and having a level of leadership that is conscious and servant-oriented or service-oriented.